Hekigan Roku, Case 17. A monk asked Kyorin, what is the meaning of Buddha's coming from the West? Kyorin said, sitting long and getting tired. Good morning. Good morning. This Hatsu day, uh, are we at breakfast yet? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe Niten Soji or breakfast. I don't know how far we've gotten. Uh, one long sitting day. Don't be fooled by the coming and going of meals and the sun and the moon. It's one day. Figure that one out. Before I get on to what I get on to, when I was younger, I played football, American football. Hmm? The whole deal. Taught me a lot of things. Teamwork, discipline. Something else I forgot. It also taught me how to put on a helmet, run straight ahead, head first into a brick wall and like it. Have you ever done it? <laughs> Helmet. Check. Chin strap. Check. Coach, put me in. Go to the field. Here comes the play. Oh no. You've done it. Want me to act it out again? Helmet, chin strap, check. Zazen period. Announcement. During this period, there will be doksan. Bong, bong, bong. <laughs> Dharma hall. Zazen. Ching, 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 ching. Bong, bong. <laughs> Doksan room. Open the door. Prostrations. Open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> then what? Then break through. Crumple. Bounce off. Doesn't matter. What do you do next? <clears throat> you get your helmet, you patch it up, and you do it again. It's fun. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of arts that reference Zen. Wonderful arts. Flower arranging. Tea ceremony. My personal favorite, Japanese swordsmanship. Getting a theme here, I like to run into things. Not swords. That's a problem. The problem with some 
activity, adopting aspects of Zen is it's not really there. Zen spa. Many years ago, maybe 10 or more, I uh, remember uh, after a particularly grueling session for this person, um, physically grueling, maybe mentally, I, I, I don't know, but Sunday afternoon when session was over, she came up to me and she said, next person that walks up to me and mentions a Zen spa, I'm punching in the nose. It's hard work, exertion. Exert yourselves, exert yourselves, Daitokoku, she says. I'm going to try to piece together a little bit of a story here where if I do it right, I may be able to paint a picture for you of an art that at its inception, conception, beginning, was influenced by Rinzai Zen Buddhism. And it is infused with this, rather than picking and choosing what you like. It comes from the ground up. I'll, I'll try to paint that picture. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to introduce a couple historical figures from uh, Japanese uh, history. Just very briefly, I'm not going to do biographies of, or such. Um, but they're, they're all instrumental in, in this. <clears throat> Okay, so a couple uh, characters. The first one, I think you know, Takuan Soho Zenji. Great Zen master. Fifteen seventy three to sixteen forty five. So this is. Uh, the Edo period, um, Edo is the old name for Tokyo area. So it's got Nihonjin ga? Toko. Anyway, hey, okay, you catch me if I say something. <laughs> ah, ah, yes, 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 yes. So Edo period, uh, 1600s and Buddhist priest, Zen master, uh, calligrapher, poet, all around bon vivant. He uh, rubbed elbows with the hoi polloi, the, the government, swordsman, got himself exiled by the emperor, got himself reinstated. He was abbot of Dai Tokuji for a time. Very accomplished. Very accomplished. I think you know him for another reason, right? The pickle. <laughs> the yellow, the yellow pickled daikon radish. The only reason it's yellow is dye number three in the department store, but <laughs> yellow dye number two or whatever it's called. But, uh, you know, a daikon is white uh, to begin with, but Anyway, the daikon pickle, he's popularly credited with uh, takuan, takuan pickle. He's credited with uh, creating. So every time you have one at a meal, please remember. Um, the other thing is his death poem, you know? So Zen masters write a farewell note, a death poem. He didn't write one on his deathbed. They said, please write. He wrote a single character. You met dream, dream. 
I won't spoil the end of Diamond Sutra for you reading this week. Dream. This Rohatsu is a dream. Your dream vacation is here. How can you not enjoy it? I know we are admonished not to speak, not to make eye contact, not to distract. It doesn't mean with your eyes lowered you can't have a little smile on your face. Just for the joy of every step, just for the joy of... There was a miracle happened at... Uh... Is Mukan here? I told him. Miracle happened, miracle happened at um, lunch. Uh, the third bowl was kimchi. That's not the miracle. <laughs> third bowl was kimchi. So while I was still putting my whatever utensil I was using to get it out, still putting it back, the tray got, the, the bowl got pulled, bumped my arm, and I bumped my third bowl kimchi, and it went off the edge of the table. So when you have five bowls in your set, you have bowls four and five, and three is on top of it? Well, four and five slid out first, and three turned upside down on top of it. <laughs> Nothing spilled. Well, a little did, it's on my robe. So whoever, Togan, sorry, I'm gonna smell like kimchi for a couple days. Um, but no, the bulk of it, I just turned it over, put it back on the table. So you never know, you know, um, you never know. Miracles happen. Anyway, that's Takuan. Um, his part in this will be to be an advisor to martial artists, the swordsman. The next two individuals introduced are swordsmen. <clears throat> Kamizumi Senokami Fujiwara no Hidetsuna. Famous swordsman. Born 1529, died 1606. So his life spanned the Sengoku, the warring period, and the Edo period. So he fought in the major war, Sengoku period, where the, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not a Japanese historian, but this was like major battlefield conflict. You know, he fought in that. And then uh, the Tokugawa and the Edo period started resolving everything, and then the violence was limited to one-on-one. -on -one. That's when the carrying of swords became very popular among samurai and, you know, and, and, and such. Not interested in any of this, I'm sorry, but... Kami uh, Izume uh, Ise no Kami... So, his, his date of his death... Takuan was five years old. So I don't believe Takuan is the one who educated him in Rinzai Zen Buddhism. <laughs> Maybe. But... Um, Kamizume, Kamizumi Sama, he learned about, it's clear, he learned about Rinzai Zen Buddhism. Why is it clear? In his writings, he never once mentioned Zen. Never. Even though what he did what, up until that point in time, The concept of Japanese swordsmanship was a very, uh, he changed it. It was very much take the battle to the foe, dominate, kill everything in sight, don't leave anything. Sound familiar in this world? Um, I was thinking about this talk and talking about this, and I just want to take a, a moment. I know that there's a lot of uh, 
pain in the world, in real wars happening now. I'm not trying to make light of. I'm not trying to ignore. I'm not trying to glorify. But I'll continue to talk about it. So what the novelty of Kamizmi was that he took his education in Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, in particular the Hekigan Roku, the principal saying, life giving sword, death dealing sword, appears. He took that and he gave it meaning in his art. Katsujin ken setsunin to. Katsujin ken, katsu, to win. Jin, person, ken, sword. The person who win. Setsunin to. Murderous, murder, killing. Person, sword. Life giving sword, death dealing sword. Um, I'll get to uh, some things that Takuan has to say about this uh, in, in some quotes. Uh, I'll, I'll get to. But Kami's Meisen uh innovation was to create an art of swordsmanship that embodied the life-giving sword. Up until then, training was harsh. It still is harsh. All my teachers were harsh. Cannot be any other way. Don't listen too much. Um, but, what was I going to say? Oh, right. So, but imbued in this is the life giving sword. The life giving sword is let them do what they want until it's necessary. Let it be. Just let it be. I'm not going to start singing. Shinge Roshi would. I'm not. <laughs> There's an instruction in the Shinkage school that says, if they really do attack, just snatch away their sword. That's it. It's simple. That's all you have to do. Oh, he's not attacking. Oh, leave him alone. Oh, he attacked. Got it. Okay, we're done. No more fighting. The top skill in the Shinkage school is muto dori, to take away the sword. To take away the sword. Um, you know, there's lots of clever ways to do that. There's lots of clever ways in our lives to take away the sword. I'm not going to get into some psychology like, you know, just figure it out. Just lots of different ways. So Kamizume, so how do we know that he learned Rinzai Zen Buddhism? Well, the forms are divided into categories. The categories are divided into collections, and each collection may have five or eight or nine different techniques represented in it. He named them all after sections in the Hekigan Roku. They have names taken from Blue Cliff Record. And just the overall philosophy and the way the practice is continued. And this is why I said this was something that he created from the start based on. It's like he was already an accomplished swordsman. It's like taking your life and tearing it down to the ground and starting again with a different principle, not just tacking on another badge. You know, I'll get you a sash. We can do Boy Scout, Girl Scout badges. Oh, you're good. You did this. You know, you tear it down to the ground. You find out what matters and you build it back up. That's what he did. That was his genius. Okay, I promised you a third character. So the school, so um, 
Kami Izumi, he still has descendants. I met his descendants in uh, Mayazumi, north of Tokyo. Mayazumi, uh, the town, the city of Mayazumi is having a Kami Izumi Ise no Kami revival. They have posters and statues and festivals. And I marched down a street dressed in uh, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, before I get to the third character. Kami Izumi studied the Kage Ryu, Kage school. Kage is shadow, means shadow, the shadow school. It's actually the character Yo, yin and yang, it's yin. So it's actually the yin school. Once he reformulated it, he called it Shin Kage, the new shadow school. The new yin school. The new yin school. So it has multiple meanings and I, you know, that could be the next hour from five to six, or after dinner, we'll have a conference, or right? whatever. Um, no, uh, so it's the shadow school, and it has many interpretations as to why it's called that, but it's also this feeling of, you know, let it be. If it doesn't need fixing, let it be. The third, character is Yagyu uh, <clears throat> the third character is a I can't find the sheet Yagyu uh, Munetoshi this is a Mune, Yoshi Munenori Munetoshi they they were quite fluid with their choice of moniker uh, but He was a swordsman in another school and in classic form one day when Kamizumi was coming through town with some of his students, they had a little challenge. You know, relatively friendly, but Yagyu was defeated. So he said, can I be your student? Right? This is a very common trope. You know, so, oh, your student defeated me, so I want you to be my teacher, right? That kind of thing. Uh, well, it happened. Yagyu Sekishusai Muneyoshi. He lived 1529 to 1606. He overlapped with Takuan. This is where Takuan makes a connection to the swordsman. He didn't actually make a connection to Kamizumi. I brought him up because he was the founder of the school. But he made a connection to Yagyu. Uh, Yagyu Mune, Munenori. And <clears throat> other swordsmen. Miyamoto Musashi, the famous, you know, Miyamoto Musashi movies and everything. Takuan advised him. Um, he advised uh, Tadaki Tosai, who was the Ito school. Um, so many, many, you know, he was, like I said, he was a man about town. He liked, you know, to rub elbows with the power. So he wrote a letter. To, he wrote several letters to Yagyu Munenori talking about how a martial artist, a swordsman, should behave and or expect. And uh, we're not going to go out and fight with swords. It'd be fun. But, uh, <laughs> but we're not going to go out and fight with swords. But I think it's relevant. It's how... You'll see. You'll see. You'll see what, you'll see what Taquan says. I won't tell you. You'll see. Um, and it says he sent it to Yagyu, but most people believe that he sent it around to most everybody, like Itosai from the Ito school and whatever. You know, he was, he was trying to influence people. So one of the writings is called Taiyaki, the annal of the sword Taiya. 
Kaya is the name of the sword. It's a jewel encrusted Chinese. It's a Chinese story. Jewel encrusted sword that slices through everything, can pierce rock. Uh, you know, just think Manjushri. Okay. Uh, it pierces rock. It cuts. It's, it, it, it's amazing. It can cut and what do I write? What did I write here? I wrote, I wrote stuff down, so maybe I should read it. Um, sword that could cut everything, penetrates everywhere, cuts stone and steel. Takuan provided his insights on this special sword from the point of view of Zen Buddhism. Cutting everything, becoming everything, becomes nothing. Being everywhere is nowhere. Okay? I had an interaction many, now decades ago, with Edo Roshi. And he asked me about breathing and where does it come from, from the hara. Then where? Then filling, then expanding, then it's nowhere, then again. So in the beginning of this letter, okay, next thought. In the beginning of this letter, Takuan says, as a martial artist, I do not fight for gain or loss. I am not concerned with strength or weakness. You wouldn't think that, would you? Think MMA. Sorry, mixed martial arts. You know, these guys that get in a ring and then they bloody each other up and... Nonsense. I do not fight for gain or loss. I am not concerned with strength or weakness. I neither advance nor retreat a single step. I win right where I am. Sound familiar? Heart Sutra? No gain, no loss. Nothing defiled, nothing pure. I neither advance nor retreat a single step. Remember this one for just hold that thought for a few more minutes. Um, I'm going to make sure that there's enough yoga time. Don't worry. I won't uh, ramble on too much. The Shinkage school says when confronted by an opponent, simply snatch away his sword. Again, I said it again. But that's it. The manual is one line long. I have a stack of kudensho. Uh, kudensho means the written record of oral transmission. I always thought that was funny. It's a written record of oral transmission. But then I realized what it meant. When you passed a certain point, when you did something, you were given. And you say, oh, now I got the secrets. And you open it up. And it's what Sensei's been saying the last three years. It's just a reminder of what you just learned. Hence, it's a written record of the oral transmission that you got while you were studying. So, you know, we all know that there are books and books and books. And the best way to read a book is uh, just to understand it in a moment. When you read it and it's true, you say, aha, of course, I could have written that. I'm not smart enough to write a book, but I could have written it, you know. So uh, just snatch the sword away, that's all. 
Let's see, uh, back to Taquan. When the accomplished person uses the sword, but does not kill others. No, sorry. An accomplished person uses a sword, but does not kill others. This person uses a sword and gives life. When it's necessary to kill, he or she kills. When it's necessary to give life, he or she gives life. Without looking at right and wrong, one is able to discern right and wrong. Without attempting to discriminate, one is able to discriminate. Treading on water, now I'm reading Taquan. Treading on water is just like treading on land. And treading on land is just like treading on water. If you can gain this freedom, you will not be perplexed by anyone on earth. Do you want to obtain this? Walking, stopping, sitting, or lying down, in speaking and in remaining quiet, during tea and during rice, you must never neglect exertion. You must quickly set your eye on the goal and investigate thoroughly, both coming and going. Thus, should you look straight into things, as months pile up and years pass by, it should seem like a light appearing on its own in the dark. You will receive wisdom without a teacher and will generate mysterious ability without trying to do so. It is ordinary yet transcends. I call it Taya, the sword. Takuan goes on to tell us this Taya is not obtained. This Taya is inside each and every one of us. It is our face before our parents were born. It is in each one. Through exertion, it is revealed, not obtained. Yeah. All people are equipped with this sharp sword, Taya, and in each one, it is perfectly complete. Tuck one again. Those for whom this is clear are feared even by the Maras. But those for whom this is obscure are deceived even by the heretics. When two of equal skill meet at sword's point, there is no conclusion to the match. It is like Shakyamuni's holding the flower and Kashyapa's subtle smile. If we both simultaneously unsheathe Taya, there's no end. Just smile and we might as well have a cup of tea. That's all. So I said that the teachings are embodied in the techniques that Kamizumi created. The very first ones you learn, the collection is called Sangaku en no Tachi. San is three. Three. Gaku is teachings, study teachings. Three teachings. En is enso. 
three teachings around the circle of the sword. It's just a poetic way to remind us of three key points, three key points in studying. Uh, we use a little drawing. I drew one. Uh, a cir uh, well, I'll show you. I drew this right before, uh, right before we came out. You draw a circle and you put three tick marks on it. Narao, keiko, kufu. Narao means instruction. Receiving instruction, studying, taking in. Uh, receiving instruction. Keiko is practice. Practice it, practice it, practice it. It's not enough. Physically, something has to happen. I don't care. In the Zendo, physically, something has to happen. This practice is physical. You know that. <laughs> Sitting long. <laughs> Getting tired. And then the third one, Kufu, is put it into practice. Make it happen. Make it work. Actually, the characters for Kufu are Kung Fu. Same as Kung Fu. You know? So, Shinkage has a Kung Fu. I have my own Kung Fu. Sorry, Hong Kong, too many Hong Kong movies. Um, oh, remind me, movie, one more thing. Anyway, this is just a reminder. So what happens when you learn something and you practice it and you put it into practice? Well, then you learn some more. And then this circle doesn't end. You keep going round and around. Sorry, I didn't. You keep going around and around between receiving some instruction Maybe from your teacher, maybe from the lake, maybe from the sky, maybe just revelation. Then you have to practice it. Then you find a way to make it work. You practically use it. Otherwise, it's just... I don't know the right word. I don't have enough English words. Uh, it's uh, just a game of some kind. If you don't actually use it somehow. Keiko, keiko, practice. It's not practice. The word keiko is very interesting. Maybe I'll end pretty close with this. The word keiko is very interesting. It's uh, commonly translated as practice, like I'm going to keiko tonight. There's keiko from seven to eight. But keiko, the meaning of the word is really something like connecting to the past. So it's used for traditional arts. Flower arranging. You can go to keiko, flower arranging. If you go play tennis or basketball, that's undo. That's, uh, that's practice. That's, I'm just going to go work out. I'm going to go work out. But keiko, my one teacher said, Correctly, you should say, Keiko Sanshin, connecting to the past, creating the new. So when you do this practice, you're connecting to the past, creating the new, connecting to Shakyamuni Buddha, to Kami Izume Ise no Kami. The current headmaster of the Shinkage school is the 22nd headmaster. So they got a lot to do to catch up to 85 generations of, since Shakyamuni, 85, 6, okay. But um, still, 400-year-old school, nothing to laugh at, right? There's something there. So the current headmaster, I've studied with the 21st and the 22nd headmasters. 21st headmaster died in two, 2005 and his son took over. And he's kind of my, in our 30s, we were just young punks. We were practicing together. He's, he's older than me, about eight years, but, but we, you know, we knew each other in the 30s and 40s. So he's kind of my, you know, I don't want to say peer, he's the master, but um, I call him Soke, which is the formal title for the head of a, school. Uh, K 
keiko. So when you come to sit, yes, you are training your body, you are training your mind, you are also connecting through generations and generations and generations and generations. Can I stop now? Because I have to do it a lot of times. You're connecting to everyone who's done this practice before and at the same time creating something new that then will be connected to for generations and generations and generations. It's no small thing. It's not just I'm going to go sit for eight days and then off I go. It's a great thing. I didn't even talk about techniques. I've got the list here. Sangaku en no tachi, I told you, is the three. There's five techniques. Ito ryodan, zante setetsu, hankai hanko, usen saten, chotan ichimi. Ito ryodan. One sword, two purposes. Zante setetsu. This one is case 17 exactly. Engo, in the introduction, says, oh, I always do this. Engo in the introduction says, uh, this is silly, there's only four pages. Um, cutting through steel. Well, the way we translate Zanse Setetsu is Cutting steel, chewing nails. That's how intense the practice is. Cutting steel, chewing nails. Zante setetsu. It feels like it, huh? Maybe it feels like you're sitting on nails sometime after the third hour uh, sitting long, so. I feel you. I feel you. It's, you know, all all the all the, all these uh, masters who trained for so many years and went through so much. They got nothing on you. You're doing it too. <laughs> You're sitting through it. Um, the last two of those five are, you know, usen saten. Uh, no, the last three, hankai hanko. Oh, that's interesting. So number two is zante setetsu, cutting through steel, grinding nails with your teeth. Hankai hanko means a uh, half. You turn halfway to this side and then a little halfway this side. So sometimes it's like, meh, this way, that way, they're both going to work. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, Usen saten, turning right, turning left, and chotan ichimi, near and far are the same. Near and far are the same. And the techniques like uh, um, zante setetsu, if, uh, ha, brush pen. Zante setetsu, if I was to raise my sword, then I'm exposing myself. So in Zante setetsu, I take up this stance. And if he comes, he comes. If he doesn't, if she doesn't, she doesn't. We have men and women practicing. Don't, I just, beautiful target. If he misses this, he's got this. Oh, here it comes. Remember, I don't retreat a step. I don't advance a step. I stand right here. Then it comes. I remove this one. I insert this one. I didn't move. And I win with his sword right over my head. No escape. There is no escape. No evading. What comes, comes. Okay, we're, we're, uh, we're going to finish right now.
So um, I guess I just wanted to convey something about a training regimen and art. that has all the stuff that I said. Um, the funny thing is when you go to dinner after a training session with a group of Shinkage practitioners and you finish your meal and you start talking and then someone says, oh, remember this afternoon during the session when you did this and, you did this? and they get out their chopsticks and they start. The next thing you know, there's like 30 guys in the room women too. There's, there, and they're all got their chopsticks out at the table like, and the wait staff is like, what? What's going on? What are they doing? Um, I have written down here, what is a talk without vague platitudes? I've got a few, but I'm going to save them. And what I wish is we sit long and get tired because that means something is happening. What is the meaning? Sitting long and getting tired. Embrace it you embraceable you.